Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Missouri here, September 28, 2019, this Saturday morning. Just going through my weekend stuff, scored our index yesterday, shared a bunch of charts with you on the blog yesterday. This morning, as I'm doing my sector by sector analysis, I was thinking about what I've been telling you lately on the videos about the tech sector, and I thought I'd point out uh, how that sector looks. But I, I wanted to start first just with the uh, SNP that you have in front of you. This this is from the video I did oh, two, three days ago and been uh, pointing out, and again, this is a futures chart, been pointing out this resistance level from August. And I said, make no mistake, folks, when, and I think it was a when, not an if, we come down to this line, a really good chance there's a lot of uh, support there for that, that there'll be some real buying. What was once resistance, it's often said, become support. And this was virtually a no-brainer in my view and again this was uh this was a couple of days ago looking at it looking at it live although of course this is the window over the weekend when futures are closed so this is as of last night's close in the futures market yesterday with that news out of washington that the administration was actually considering what you really can't call anything other than capital controls which would be highly unusual uh, such a move in the United States. And I don't suspect we're going to go there, but the threat is to limit U.S. investors' ability to allocate capital to Chinese assets. I could spend quite some time lecturing on how that would be a profoundly bad idea for investors, for, of course, global capital flow, for freedom for a lots of, lots of things but you know there's some uh, some pretty noted figures who actually think it might be a good idea i think they are unequivocally wrong but uh, that's just my view and i may not be able to resist offering up some some of my thoughts on the blog probably the written blog going forward but for our purposes here i just want to point out that as scary as that news was the decline stopped dead in its tracks right on that line just like just like it should have if indeed the u.s were to for example delist chinese companies that are traded in the u.s put the kind of capital controls on u.s citizens that would not allow them to make investments in china yesterday was absolutely nothing in comparison to what this market would do so clearly the market doesn't believe it I don't believe it, but it was enough to send a chill through the market that really by itself should have probably resolved lower. But like I said, I do think this is a tough area to penetrate. My base case is that it does ultimately get penetrated, it doesn't have to. And like I said, I keep saying every time, happy to be wrong, but right now there's enough evidence uh, to, in my view that suggests that that's where the next biggest move is more likely to be. And that would just be probabilities. That's all we do here on these charts is look at probabilities. Um, things could change and I could tell you probabilities point to something else. I still maintain that it won't surprise me to see new all time highs before we see this really break down here below, but I'll keep you posted. So uh, as I mentioned, I want, to, uh, I want to talk about the tech sector. And again, I've been talking about that here of late because the tech sector is far and away the biggest weighting in the S&P 500 index. And so the tech sector ETF XLK, which we do have some in just about everybody's portfolio, on Friday, it closed below its 50-day moving average, which is the green line here, and just held up above this upward trend line, just right there. So basically bounced off of that. That's a decent technical sign. Closing below the the, two, the 50 day moving average is a warning sign. So uh, we'll see it just barely below. It wasn't you know, something that just came crashing through here and continued. So don't be surprised if we get a bounce above that. In fact, I think there's a good chance this market does bounce early in the week as the White House really walks back some of that. I don't think uh, there's the stomach in the administration to allow itself to impose the rhetoric onto the market that would cause something you know much bigger to the downside politically i just think that doesn't work for them so if indeed that looks like it's going to happen they'll try to walk that back and as cried wolfish as all of this is traders are still very willing to go long on rhetorical comments and tweets that they have to know are just not meaningful 
in terms of where we ultimately get in this whole trade war scenario. So in addition to breaking down below the 50-day moving average, we also have a real ugly looking volume picture. This is on balance volume. And as you can see, while technology stocks as a group have actually been trending higher, I would say the smart money is taking opportunities on the little rallies to sell. You're seeing notably bigger volume on the down days than we are on the up days. So this would denote distribution in the tech sectors. This is not a good look for the prospects for technology going forward. In terms of the moving average convergence divergence, we basically use this as a longer term you know, trend indicator. We're looking for the, the slope of the, uh, of the MACD relative to the price. This is bearish. This is what you'd call a bearish divergence. This right here on a short term basis is a sell signal. That's the MACD dropping below the signal line right about here. And you can see it you know, kind of makes some sense. So traders who trade that look like they're being rewarded here, at least on a short-term basis, but not a good look at all on the MACD on the daily chart and uh, not a good look here on the relative strength index either. So folks, again, um, as I said the other day, as goes technology, so goes the overall market, certainly the S&P 500, because about 22% of the index is uh, in tech. The next closest is healthcare with 13%. So, um, so again, not a good short to intermediate term picture, as I already suggested, wouldn't surprise me to see the market bounce up in here and get a good rally earlier in the week. I do think it's going to take some help from Washington walking back some of that, what would be incredibly scary news on Friday, if indeed they at all were serious in capital controls here in the U.S. against testing in China. Uh, remember, folks, China is an absolutely huge investor into the U.S. They are the biggest buyers of our U.S. treasuries. They buy a lot of U.S. stocks. You know, they make big investments in the U.S. property market. Ironically, just the day before, I read an article how U.S. financial institutions and China were having very constructive talks in terms of more U.S. investment in China. In fact, one of the things, ironically, that we've been asking them to do is to open their markets up more so to U.S. investing. That's part of the whole trade deal is that they you know, speed up the opening up of their markets. So yesterday's news that the U.S. is considering limiting U.S. investors' access to Chinese markets is so diametrically opposed to everything we've been talking about thus far. So it has to be just a part of the whole negotiation strategy. Um, it's just very interesting. That, that they would go there. Businesses are not going to make big long-term uh, economically constructive decisions amid all of this uncertainty. And we just don't know how long that's going to last. So um, while the market could melt up to new all-time highs, this is not an arena that we really want to play in like we were just a few months ago, meaning we'll stay in stocks, but we're going to stay hedged for now. Thanks as always for watching and listening. Talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye.